Welcome to the new how-to series from Allegiant Creighton Health and Prairie Health Ventures. This series is designed for physicians, office managers, billing managers, and anyone else within the medical practice setting who works with compliance, medical, billing, and human resources aspects of your medical practice. Today's topic is how to update your NPI and PCOS information within CMS. My name is Carolyn Parker, and I'll be presenting the topic information today. Should you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via email or phone for more information. And I provided that at the end of this WebEx. The information provided in this training module is not intended to be legal or medical advice. It is recommended that participants not rely on this general guide in structuring or analyzing individual transactions, but that professional advice be sought in connection with any such transaction. Nothing herein is the official position of Allegiant Creighton Health. In this WebEx, I'm going to talk about how you apply for an MPI for individual providers and healthcare provider organizations, how to enroll in PCOS, whether it's an internet-based application or paper application. For individual providers, before you get started, you need to make sure you have the following information. The provider name, who you're applying for, the Social Security number, or ITIN if not eligible for a Social Security number, provider date of birth, country of birth, state of birth if country or birth is United States, provider gender, mailing address, the practice location address and phone number, the taxonomy, which is the provider type, state license information, the contact person name of the person completing the application, and the contact person phone number and email. Provider taxonomy codes can be obtained from the website that I've listed here. You may only have a single NPI, which will be associated with your unique individual information. Once you log on to the NPPES system, you'll be able to complete your NPI application. I have um, the website listed here as well as what it looks like when you actually get onto the right website. You're going to create a login through the Identity and Access Management System. It's going to ask you to review and mod or modify your existing personal NPI record. Completing this application, whether it's an individual provider or healthcare organization, takes about 20 minutes. So you're going to create a login through this identity and access management system, entering your email address and entering the text from the image given or listening to the audio. CMS does offer some really helpful videos and PDF files on how to set up your MPI in case you get stuck. When you get to this step one of the user security, you're going to have to create a user ID and a password. The user ID has to be 6 to 12 alphanumeric characters unique within the Identity Access Management System, cannot contain more than four digits or spaces or special characters, and it cannot contain personally identifiable information like a Social Security number or your NPI. Um, it has to be 8 to 12 alphanumeric characters, must contain at least one letter and one number, and cannot contain any special characters or be the same as your user ID. You're also going to have to select five security questions and enter their answers below. When you get to second step, you put your user information with your name, your business phone number, your fax number, date of birth, social security number, personal phone number, and home address. When you get to the next step for user registration, it's just a final review of everything that you've entered in. Some tips for application here. User IDs cannot be changed. Once you've successfully chosen a user ID and a secret question-answer combinations and submitted your record, the user ID and the secret question-answer combinations will remain tied to your record. Use the application navigation buttons next or previous. Do not use the browser's back buttons, the back and forward. If you have a problem within the system and you can't continue, wait about 20 minutes before you log on again. And it is suggested that you print each page as you complete the application to keep a record of your file. 
Once you've received verification from CMS, you can then log on to the NPPES system with your INA username and password. You complete the MPI application. Again, the estimated time to complete it is 20 minutes. And I put the customer service email and their phone number here for you. For healthcare provider organizations, they're currently required to have a separate username and password for each NPI associated with the organization. Once you've logged on to NPPES, you'll be able to complete your MPI application. Again, it's the same website. You need to create an NPPES only username and password for the NPI you're applying for. Use of the back and forward browser buttons, again, could result in loss of all the information you've entered. Users should use the next and previous buttons. This has happened so many times, it reminds you of it multiple times within the application. Next, you're going to come up to a security check. So they're going to ask you fun questions like, is water wet or dry? Just to make sure that you're a human being and that you're not just a computer system trying to hack into their system. For healthcare provider organizations, again, you have to create your user ID and password and your user IDs cannot be changed. It has also the secret questions within here as well. The application sections will be the provider profile, the mailing address, practice location, other identifiers, your taxonomy codes, contact person, and certification. So before you get started for healthcare provider organizations, make sure that you have your organization name, your employer identification number, your name of your authorized official for the organization, and I'll be talking more about the authorized officials in a second. Uh, the phone number of the authorized official for the organization, the mailing address, the practice location address and phone number, the taxonomy, again, that's a provider type, the contact person and the contact person phone number and email. You will not be able to save your work if you quit before you've completed the application form. So when you start it, you need to make sure you finish. The provider taxonomy codes, again, can be obtained here. I listed the website there for you. Now, after you apply for your NPI, you then can enroll in PCOS. What exactly is PCOS? Well, this is the Provider Enrollment Chain and Ownership Program. It's an internet-based provider enrollment program, and it allows a provider to enroll in Medicare, view and or update the Medicare enrollment information. There's five basic enrollment actions within PCOS. You can either establish a brand new enrollment, make changes of information to something that's existing, add or change reassignment of benefits, reactivate it, or voluntarily withdraw. You must have an active NPI number in NPPES, user ID and password to use PCOS. Here is the website for PCOS. So you would complete, review, and submit your electronic enrollment application. You print, sign, and date the two-page certification statement and all the supporting paper documentation to your designated Medicare contractor. You need to note that Medicare will not begin processing your application until they have received your certification statement. You need to make sure you print, sign, and date the two-page certification statement and all supporting documentation, ideally within one week of electronic submission. Now, there's two different methods here. You can either do the e-signature or the paper process. The e-signature feature will save you time and expedite the review of the enrollment application. An email will be sent to the authorized signer of the application and will contain a passcode for the e-signature submission. The authorized signer will then enter the passcode into the internet-based PCOS to finalize the uh, submission of the application. You need to mail any supporting documents and include that PCOS tracking number. Once the application is completed, the CMS EUS Help Desk will contact this person. This is your authorized official. It's a one-time enrollment. It's an option for provider groups. This person is responsible for submitting forms on behalf of the practice and assists the provider in completing the online enrollment. This individual might be an employee of the provider or supplier organization or of a separate organization. 
CMS will verify the information provided and the permission of the AO for the individual to use internet-based PICOs on behalf of the supplier organization. The individual will take a security consent form, which takes two weeks to process. And this individual will mail back the sign and data security consent form to the CMS EUS help desk. The entire process of verification can take several weeks to complete. So I'd advise you before you enroll in PICOS, you do this step first. You can even do this step when you're applying for your MPI. Now with internet-based PICOS, this is a scenario-driven application, so I just put the main screen on here. It presents a series of questions to obtain only information needed to process a specific enrollment scenario. If you have problems along the way, simply call their help desk, which their number is 1-866-484-8049, I put it real big here for you, um, and they'll be able to help you, and they prefer you to do electronically. So you can call them, will be very, very helpful. To complete each task, simply enter the required information and navigate through the screens. Once your internet-based PICOS application is submitted, it's considered locked. This means that it cannot be edited by you unless the Medicare enrollment contractor returns the application to you electronically for corrections. You may use internet-based PICOS to check on the status of your enrollment no earlier than 15 days after you submitted the application. Now within the paper process, the certification statement must be printed, signed, and dated and mailed to your Medicare contractor provider in their provider enrollment department with any supporting documents that may be required. It must be signed in order to complete enrollment or to make changes, and the signatures must be original and in ink. Blue ink is highly recommended because they will not accept copied or stamped signatures, and if you suspect they are, they will reject your application. In the paper process, there's six different forms. There's a CMS 855A for hospitals, CMS 855B for clinics, CMS 855I for individuals. This is a new one here, the CMS 8550. Those are for the ordering or referring providers. Um, those providers are the ones that don't really see patients in their office but they're reviewing um, the charts or they're reviewing different things without seeing the patient. They're just the ordering or referring provider. And then CMS 855R for the reassignment, and then CMS 855S for DME. Once you've submitted to PICOS, you're going to have four application statuses that are possible to come back to you. They might send you one that says received basically means that the practitioner successfully submitted the enrollment. If they reviewed it, they'll send one back saying reviewed, and they're taking a look at it. They might say one that's returned for additional information. Now, if you get one that says this, it must be returned within 30 days of the request. If you do not respond timely, it will delay processing, and it might cause your application to be rejected. Approved or rejected are the other ones that you might get, and they, it means they've processed it, and they've either approved it or rejected it. The notification process is a system-generated email that will be sent to the contact person listed on the application. It says processed. This can indicate that the application is approved, rejected, returned, or denied. A timely follow-up or response requested information is key. Providers should not begin billing Medicare until they've received their confirmation letter from their Medicare contractor. And you need to remember that Medicare contractors are mandated by CMS to reject any pending internet-based application if this e-signature or signed data statement is not received within 15 days of the internet-based application creation date. These are the ones that are not available through internet-based PICOS. You will have to file a CMS 855. If you have an application and change in enrollment when the practice location is in a different state from the enrollment state, changes in ownership, acquisitions, mergers, and consolidations, changes in tax identification number, if you have a change in legal business name, if you have an enrolled Medicare Part A provider, supplier, or organization wanting to enroll to bill for Part B services, the processing time for paper is about 45 to 60 days. 
This is basically a how to apply for NPI and PICOS. If you have any follow-up questions for me, you can contact me directly by my email there, or you can feel free to call me. Thank you so much, and have a great day.